tough. Man, these streets ain't got no love for you, Hugh. I mean, what other choice do I got, though? I don't know how much time I got left. Lawrence Franks Jr., a.k.a. Huey, born September 12, 1987, died June 26, 2020. Back in 2006-2007, you couldn't tell today's feature he wasn't on his way to being the next big thing in hip-hop. In September 06, he released his song Pop, Lock and Drop It to major success, climbing up the charts all the way to the 6th spot on the Billboard Hot 100, which is a major feat for any artist. Having a top 10 song solidifies for the time being you're doing everything just about right and it got you the notoriety most artists in music never get. From there though, the decisions you make next are crucial and could mean the difference between making yourself a household name or headed down the road of struggling artists only known locally and forever living off that one moment you were on top of the game. Rapper Huey had made the song he was looking for at just 18, 19 years old that could help him get out the hood and away from having to look over his shoulders every day, afraid someone that likely looks just like him may want to come and take his life and dim his shine. Unfortunately, his hit song wasn't enough to accomplish that as he still wound up being killed, shot dead in 2020 in his own hometown in a neighborhood many would call him familiar. Why was he still in the hood, you ask? Well, thing is, Huey came up in a time the hip-hop world was caught up in a musical whirlwind of snap music and ringtone rap made for the moment and made to instantly provide energy in a club, function, and even when your phone rang. Cell phones were just starting to really become a fad globally, growing as the internet grew, which gave it these new interesting abilities to surf the web, send and receive messages easily, connect to new social sites, and of course download and add music to your phone, which meant you could also use one of those songs as your very own personal alert whenever someone called. It was a fun time in music and a stage hip-hop needed to go through as it made its way to becoming the most marketable genre of music today. So songs and artists like Two Step, Laffy Taffy, Party Like a Rockstar, Hurricane Chris, Jib, Soldier Boy and just about every kid doing music at that point were becoming household names and tunes culturally, riding that and the advancement of technology wave perfectly. But for Huey, as the wave broke, he too fell flat and washed up on shore, never to catch another wave like it. He died in his early 30s, still attempting to make a way for him, his family and friends to experience a better life. For these reasons, that never happened. What did? Let's talk about it. Rest in peace, Huey. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Huey was a rapper from Kinlock, Missouri that spent some time in St. Louis as well growing up, who at 15 began learning how to produce beats on his computer and also interested in maybe becoming a rapper as well. He was introduced to producer Angela Richardson, who helped him get placement on a local mixtape called Unsigned Hype that gave him the notoriety locally to sign with Jive Records in 2006. The same year, he officially released his song Pop Lock and Drop It that blew up on 106 in Park and made Huey a household name in the ringtone rap era. Nine months later, he'd release his debut album Notebook Money that sold close to 30,000 copies first week. He'd release a second charting single featuring Loy that reached 80 on the hip-hop charts and soon after, he and Jive parted ways. Stun number 1. The End of an Era the mid-2000s was a very interesting time in rap music that produced many artists that were here today and gone tomorrow. Artists like Hurricane Chris, Mims, Jibs, Jaquan and many more, including Huey, who found the sauce at the time and were able to create a wave that changed their lives. A catchy hook, infectious enough to use as your ringtone, or create a dance with your record and you couldn't go wrong. Having both though made you a momentary star in the rap game and pop lock and drop it check both boxes. Little that we knew and thankfully for many the snap music slash blog music slash ringtone rap era was about to fade and take its rappers like Huey along with it. 
First off, the tech industry near the end of the 2000s was about to see a major stall in diversity when the iPhone was introduced in 2007 and as the decade closed, became the phone to have. Apple has dominated the cell phone market ever since and eventually all the different selections of flip phones and sidekicks we had were consolidated into one device that still reigns supreme to this day in popularity. Ringtones never really picked up with the iPhone as people began to see the silent feature on phones as the cool, smooth thing to do. Also, fans of that era became a little older and the younger generation didn't really get a chance to catch the flip phone ringtone wave. At the time, there were so many artists to choose from that made dance and snap music. None of them really survived longer than a year or two before fans moved on to the next. Then, artists like Drake, Chief Keef, J. Cole, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, Lil Durk and more took over the beginning of the 2010s before mumble rap and drill music also made their runs. Huey released his second album in 2010, three years after his peak on EMI, and it went pretty much forgotten. Stunt number 2, Him Dissing Nelly before his debut album released in 2007, Huey sought the collaboration of fellow Missouri native and rap superstar Nelly. With the hit song under his belt, Huey may have felt he was entitled or at least deserving of a feature and hand up from the biggest rapper to come from Missouri and a huge look for Huey. Apparently, Nelly refused to work with him, feeling his music wasn't up to par for a collaboration and turned him down. Since he couldn't get the feature, I guess the next best option that could maybe get him the same clout was to make a diss record toward Nelly and that's what he did. He released Down Baby, Nelly Diss in 2007 and a song called Back At Ya where he clowned Nelly for his attempt at singing and his Saint Lunatics not really being relevant in the streets like they wanted fans to believe. For the most part, the songs fell on deaf ears and failed to create the controversy Huey was looking for. But what they did do was solidify Nelly nor his crew would ever work with Huey and I'm guessing if you were a rapper in St. Louis or even in the industry that cared about a relationship with Nelly, you weren't going to do a song anytime soon with Huey either. Time is something Huey didn't have in abundance as his era was about to close and his style music was about to be a thing of the past. He was essentially blackballed after those diss tracks and they were buried over time with not many remembering he even went at Nelly. Diss records are a tricky thing. The only guarantee is shock value, but how long will that last and how strong will the punch be? Once you throw that punch, you can't take it back. Instead, you will have to live with the consequences of the damage and in this case, those didn't favor Huey in the streets, on the local music scene, nor the industry. Add to that, labels that hope to work with Pimp Juice may have shied away as well. Stun number three, not able to make another hit. Unless you were an artist talented enough to create more magic, charismatic enough to be taken under the wing or co-signed, or like a rich to kid, able to connect with other artists and facilitate collaborations that kept you relevant, you most likely didn't survive the ringtone rap era. Soulja Boy is a good example of an artist that did survive because Soulja Boy had just about all those things. From time to time, he comes with a hit record, charismatic so fans like him outside of music, and he's worked with literally every artist of his generation and most artists after as well in some way. He's mastered the art of riding the new wave and artists with the wave and that has helped him last over time. Huey simply couldn't follow Pop Lock and drop it with another hit song and some would say whoever the female was that sung the hook on that song is who really made that song hot. So was it ever even his ability that made a hit song in the first place? Either way, nothing caught on after that and as you know, in music, if you can't make the charts, things go dark. For your career that is. Huey signed to Waka Flocka's label Brick Squad Monopoly but not even that could help him throughout the 2010s. His style just wasn't popular. In 2020, as mentioned, he was shot and killed in June in Kinloch after a car drove by and let off shots into a group of more than 10 people. 
Huey was the only one that ended up dying from his wounds. He was 32 years old. All in all, Huey struck gold at the right time and got off with a top 10 hit song. Most rappers never get that, so at least he had that foot in the door. But he couldn't follow it up and lost connection to the fans long enough that they moved on. He persevered thereafter but never got to that height again before he was tragically killed. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Rest in peace, Huey. It's your boy, JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.